farming for 30 years uh, organic and biodynamic, but he's always had to do it for someone else. Right. Here, we can farm it exactly the way it should be farmed. And because it's small enough, it's probably one of the only vineyards in the Napa Valley that is farmed impeccably perfect. So we only have two clusters per uh, cane, uh, two canes per spur, unless it's a younger vine, and then it's only one cane per spur. And like 2012 was a bigger year, so 2013, um, we intentionally uh, didn't allow a lot of the vines to carry what we would normally let them carry right. um, because we want balance. The soil is the absolute essence of our vines. We focus on a really healthy microbial population in the soil and we do that by making our own compost. All the lawn clippings, all the garden, everything, rabbits, chickens, uh, all of it goes into the compost. We turn around and um, put it back out into the vineyard. This tea is loaded with microbes. I mean, it's all from the, from the compost. All of those microbes and uh, good bacteria, all of that stuff, then gets, we'll either spray it on the foliage or we'll um, spray it on the ground or we'll inject it into the irrigation line. And that's more for? It's, it's keeping a healthy microbial balance in the soil. Okay. When the microbes get into the soil and then they mix with water from mm -hmm. the rain, they uh, then break down the elements that are in uh, the soil and then those elements are now available to go up and into the vine being carried by the water. Right. Awesome. So who came up with the name Wiseacre? Um, Kirk did. Okay. We want humor and joy in the name. Mm -hmm. We wanted that. So when people hear the word Wiseacre, they instantly laugh. <laughs> they instantly get a, a an uplifted yeah. feeling instantly. And then we also wanted to represent the fact that we're less than an acre. Okay. And um, obviously the heavy part of it is the wise way we farm. Sure. And you know, that that was really important. Is this your primary focus? Is Wiseacre? Okay. Yeah. And was wine something that would, like, is your background in wine, or did you? Um, I grew up on a cattle you? ranch in Oakville, a okay. small cattle ranch, um, and then we, that became a vineyard when I was about in fourth grade, and my dad didn't believe in hiring. He, us kids did the work, so, you know, I grew up working in the vineyard. Right. Um, and for Kirk, you know, he, they came here in 76, and, um, you know, he was always, that way. So both of us were farmers. You know, yeah. somebody asked, you know, about the technique of making the wine and all that, and I'm like, you need to go talk to the winemaker. <laughs> <laughs> that is their thing, that is their forte. We are the farmers and we will bring beautiful grapes to the winemaker. And right. So who's making the wine for you guys? Helen Keplinger. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. The first season that she was making our wine, she was. Uh, rolling a uh, vat of it out and putting it in the sun, just to sit in the sun and cook. You know, and then she'd bring it back in and then add it to the rest of the batch and things like that. Wow. Just things like that and we're like, how cool is that? Very creative, mm -hmm. full of passion. Yeah. Um, I really sincerely appreciate her incredibly positive energy. Gosh, this is, I mean, it just keeps getting better and glassy to like, Yeah. I'm sure you like to hear it, but like, yeah. It's it's so pure and expressive, and it doesn't it doesn't hit hard. It has a long finish without it like weighing down the palate. It's just a very very pretty wine. Yeah. I can't wait to see this in like ten years too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, even yeah. more like some of those secondary tertiary things are going to start to come out. Yeah. Um, are there things about the Boche clone that you find to be specific to the Boche clone that you use? Know, in terms of uh, tasting, I don't have a, a good enough palate. My, I don't think I have a good enough palate to really be able to judge details of a clone. Mm -hmm. I don't have that. Um, that'd be a sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Forte. <Yeah. laughs> I just know in terms of farming, 
you know, that it lends itself to a lower acid. Um, okay. It handles itself better um, in terms of the phenolic ripening um, being more balanced. Um, and I, I love the fact that, you know, therefore we can harvest at a lower sugar, which is what we were always striving for. Is, you know, this is far surpassed what we were striving for, but it was what we were striving for. Um, and I love the fact that it's an Old Valley clone. Right. I love that. Yeah. And, you know, way back when in the 60s and the 70s, it was you, your alcohols were 13 and 12 mm -hmm. sometimes. I mean, that's where they were. Oh, I'm so happy with how this wine is opening. It's just... Yeah, it keeps on going. Yeah. It keeps on going. But it doesn't get big. Like, it's cool because it's, you know, a lot of wines will just start putting weed and, and get a little bit more blown out as they open. And uh -huh. instead of going like, like this, it just kind of like stays in this like straight and narrow. Mm -hmm. um, oh, interesting. I love to hear some talk. It's fascinating. <laughs> but you've just, you've, yeah. you're the first that has, has such a, a lovely descriptor like that. That's, oh. I mean, I always hear songs rattling off. It's got this, it's got that chocolate, blah, 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 you know, <laughs> and mint and whatever. But it's like, you know, I like, yeah. No, I like to hear the, where the wine's going. <laughs> it's, you know, it's all about the train. <laughs> There's 10,000 different flavor profiles in a wine, so inherently, you know, the wines are going to cross over, and that, that doesn't really identify a wine by how it really tastes. Interesting. It's about how it makes you feel and how it's going to coat your mouth and how it's going to taste. Well, and the other the other chicken. element is um, we, you know, with our energy balancer and and, our, and with the grapes, um, he actually goes in and he puts his hands on the barrels, and he'll work a barrel for know, 15 minutes or so. And he says, what intent do you want? And I said, love and gratitude. I want love and gratitude in this wine. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's how we farm it. Um, and we show appreciation to the vineyard and all of that. And I truly believe that when you inject something with love and gratitude and you're sitting around the table you take that in. You take that kind of energy mm -hmm. in because it's in here. All the atoms and electrons, mm -hmm. you are consuming that. Right. You know, our, our job as Psalms is not always to sell any bottle to anyone. Right. Um, yeah. You know, it's really about matching people with whatever the right bottle is. So if, right. you know, you get a great energy from a guest, they're like, we just want something different and, and um, you know, that kind of speaks to us and we haven't heard it before. It's maybe a little more boutique. Like, yeah, that's where you. That's where we the wine that you right. go to, as opposed to yeah. the real boisterous, loud. Sure. Person. You know, like you know, there's yeah. like I said, there's a place for every wine, mm -hmm. and um, you know, not every. Uh, it's why we have so many different choices in life. Um, right. Because everyone's right. different. I love this wine. Great job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.